Hello, heroes. It's Dr. Zeno with 15 Minute Fuel, where just in 15 minutes a day will fuel your mind, your body, and your future. Well, we're just back, uh, got back from Vegas yesterday, so uh, I didn't do any lives and because we didn't feel like doing it and we were running around busy, so just kind of give you the weekend off and we enjoyed it. So I'll, I'll give you a lowdown on that, but before we, uh, we go into, we'll go over a couple announcements. Thank you so much for also just all the great comments you've been doing. We've been doing things differently. So the way it's been, every Monday you're going to be having a diet hack, right? Right? It's diet hack. So I know a lot of you want three, but you're going to get one. Why? Because you appreciate it more. You know, so one, and just at least do that one. Uh, every Wednesday you're going to get a one of the one of my favorite We Are Heroes that we did, and I do a little commentary on it because I get to watch them. I'm watching them still every day because we there's, we learn some great stuff in those things. So that'll be Wednesday, and on Friday, where you're going to get like one of those 30 second teasers, so some like really cool bits that we used to do along the season, uh, just good stuff to get you going. And then we'll have maybe you know check out my social media on Instagram and Facebook. That's where I'm hanging out mainly now. And uh, then we'll just have little questions to answer you guys, thought-provoking questions to get you thinking just because we're going to slowly start steering you in the right direction. I do a lot of Mr. Miyagi stuff on you guys for a reason because I want you guys, because sometimes our way of thinking isn't getting us where we want to be, so I might have to, you know, shift things around for you. So uh, you could also get these on SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. Make sure you join those if you're a podcaster and a listener. And also go to the YouTube channel, Dr. Zane, you'll be able to see that. So let's go over the re recap of the week, and, so, and then I'll go into uh, what we're going to talk about today. So Justice went to Vegas, did great. He uh, competed in four different areas. He did uh, just the hand forms. He did his weapons, as usual. Uh, he did grappling, jujitsu, and he did uh, sparring. So the way it is, is now this was the year, his first year he did Vegas. He was a green double stripe. And then last year he was a red stripe or red double stripe. And now this year he was a black belt. So each, each level up, of course, it gets more difficult. And then instead of becoming the oldest, he was actually one of the youngest. So now things are going up. And uh, even at a black belt, he did really good. He got, uh, he did, uh, his bow form was perfect. The way he trained it, it was insane. I think I'll, I'll actually upload that and post that on Facebook. You gotta see it. It's like, cause what I'm saying will never give justice to how justice did that. So he did that perfect. He wound up getting second place in the black belts in the world championship. Uh, the, and then the kid who, who did win, you can be like, and when you watch, you'll be like, how did, you know, how that even happened? How did he, how did he not get first? Uh, well, you know, the, the kid, was amazing too who did it. His dad is actually a teacher. So now Justice was actually the only one who was placing that did not have a father or a relative that actually owned a, a dojo, right? So uh, it was really super cool. So I want him to realize how well he did. And he got uh, second in forms, which is awesome uh, in the world. And then when it came to jujitsu, I think he got third place in jujitsu uh, either last year or the year before and he came back with a vengeance and got first on that. So first in the world on jiu-jitsu and he's, you know, he's got daddy's uh, built in genetics. So he, it was really cool. It was really cool. He, uh, it, it was, it was fun to see. And then sparring, he did sparring as well. And, uh, you know, these, you realize, you realized in boxing, I always ask like, well, how come they're all about the reach and the height? Well, you know, when you're <laughs> like me, if I'm five foot seven, I go against a six foot four dude and I'm boxing him, I can't get in. So, uh, so that was the thing. He was, fighting kids uh, way big and in, in there it was uh, it was just you had it almost like fencing you just got to hit them or tap them to get in there so uh, we'll, we'll work on that but he did amazing otherwise and so that leads me to uh, number one if you're liking this please hit the like button I stopped doing that and hit the share button our shares went down because I'm just not asking you so hit the share hit the like even if you're not watching this live hit it comment so that brings us to the name of today's show, which is the skills that pay the bills. Now, number one, if you're 40, you understand where that song came from. That title comes from the Beastie Boys song, The Skills to Pay the Bills. Great song. It's in my MP3 player. But also, I, I've, I've seen it at such a, at, at every level, and this relates to all of us watching this right now, even when you're playing on an even playing field. So wherever you work, everybody that's just doing their job. So if you just do your job, you're at an, what I call an even level playing field. It's even, you're getting, you're just doing your job. But the person who has the little bit of an, a little bit like the 1% extra skill or something they could bring to the, to a value to the workplace, to their job, they're the ones who wind up taking, taking the win or going further. 
And it does not have to be like, I need to know some amazing skill. We're talking 1%. And use the example what I saw this weekend. Here's the example. Now, all the black belts at a black belt level, they all were 100%. Like, all of them did. There was no one, unless someone dropped their weapon, you know, they got to qualify. But everybody did perfect. So it's like, when you watch them, it was an even, even level playing field of awesomeness. So they were all awesome. So you're like, how? Like, that form was perfect. Like, you literally sat there and like, they, that was perfect, that was perfect, that was perfect. So how do you win when everybody does something perfect? And they all did it perfect. And I know there's no such thing as perfect, but these kids did it perfect. The way you win when everybody does it's perfect is you bring a skill that no one else has or a little bit of an extra skill that is slightly above the rest. So the skill could be, like we saw today, a kid who did a backflip. Wow, all right. I, I didn't know, I, you know, we didn't practice backflips. Well, when you do it, when there's an even 11 playing field and you do a backflip, you won. All right, so you see the one extra skill. It could be catching the bow behind your back. It could be uh, doing, a, 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 like I said, the backflip. It could be doing this extra move that no one else was doing. The uniqueness and the difference and that little bit of an extra skill was the one that puts you to first versus being second. That's what I'm talking about. So at work, are you going into work and you're just trying to be even like everybody else? Or what's that one little bit of skill you have that'll put you above and add more value? No, I don't mean above isn't better, but here's the thing, that one or 2%, that will, that will equal higher salary, higher raise, more favor in the company. And it doesn't have to be what you think. So let's say you're at your job and you're, um, you love birthdays and you're set and you just, like your natural gift is like you're such a birthday person that you would love to say, hey, listen, can I take over doing all the birthdays of the office? And I'll, I'll remind everybody and we'll get the card signed. So see that little skill right there? That sets you above. So just think, everybody's a black belt. That one little sign a birthday card, you're the birthday, boom. Or maybe uh, at, at our office. So Shannon's great with the oil. She does all those essential oils. Boom, that's a skill. Sets are above, right? That little skill. So the place smells good. People say, wow, it smells great in here. People notice it. Patients appreciate it. They ask me, I'm like, the girls know what they're doing with the scents up there. So you see that little bit of extra stuff. Um, if you're an organizer or anything you could bring to the table, it doesn't even have to be job related. If you're, uh, if you're a good party organizer or if you're uh, whatever that is that you could bring to your job that you love to do, then offer to do it. So almost go to the boss or your job or even work and say, what's the extra thing you could do that might not be part of your job description, but say, hey, listen, you know, I'm really good at Facebook. Can I, uh, can maybe I help do some of the Facebook posts for this, for the workplace? You ask them, they say, sure. What do you want, 400 bucks a month? Sure, there you go. So it's that little bit extra bit and you get to do something you like to do. So all these, what, what I'm trying to say is, it's the little bit of skill that you do in an even playing field that it might seem small, but at the end of the day, it equaled a first place or a grand champion over someone who was amazing and perfect, and that was a second place. It was the flip. It was the extra move that they learned in gymnastics. So, so a lot of these kids brought gymnastics into their martial arts. So you had gymnastics plus martial arts, right? Gymnastics is a skill, they rise above. And, not, and that's the same thing, it's, it's, I saw it, I'm like, that's all across life, period. So you're looking for the raise, you're looking for the promotion, you're looking for better opportunity, then bring the skills that you have. If you're a great cook, if you're a writer, let's say you love to write. So maybe you would offer, hey, can I write the newsletter for the office? Can I write, a, can I write a, an article and that we could send that out to all our, our clients and our members in an email each and every single week? So you have gifts, you have talents, you have skills. Let's say you speak another language, that's huge. A real good friend of mine, Roberto Monaco, you know, he speaks English as his second language, Brazil is his first language, and then he learns Spanish, he learns Spanish. And, you, and it's tougher to learn Spanish because Brazil, 50% of it is, could be translated to Spanish, so it's almost even more difficult. And so now he could actually do his thing in three different languages, which logarithmically sets him above the rest. So if I was competing with Roberto, because in life we are competing, I'm sorry, if you work for somebody, if you're working, like you're, you are competing with the person on your left or right, so if I'm competing against somebody, if Roberto and I compete, and he has, he knows two other languages, he's got skills that I don't have, and automatically he's gonna bring more value. And so that's why in all you do, what are the skills that you have, either learn one, 
but you don't even have to learn when you have things that you have already, but you're taking it for granted because you think, well, how, I mean, how is cooking gonna, I, I work at a paper, paper mill. I'm just saying that because we've been watching The Office. My justice is into The Office now. So that's the only thing I can think of is a paper mill. Let's say I work at a paper company and you're a good cook or, I mean, if you're a good writer, that would work, but let's say you're a good cook or you're a good singer. It's like you could work your skill into that job to bring better human resources, to bring better uh, company unity or uh, um, relationships, you know, the, anything you could do, bring, offer to bring something unique. It might not even part of, be part of your job description. And then also that'll take it to a new level. So I just witnessed, uh, witnessed this weekend when you watch people, and I believe you guys online, you're all working hard, right? You're putting in the time, you're putting in the work, and you're investing that money, right? So you're working hard, but sometimes your best on an even playing field isn't going to be good enough. It's not going to cut it. But if you just put in that one extra percent, at max two, and you throw a little bit of an extra skill in, it'll separate the promotion or the hire over the fire. And I really think that's why focus on your uniqueness, focus on your differences, focuses on, focus on your skills, think to yourself, what can I bring to the workplace today? That might be entirely oddball, but say, hey, listen, I could write an article for the office each and every single week. I could write a newsletter if you're a writer. Or if you're a podcaster, be like, hey, listen, let's do a podcast uh, or let's do videos. Can we do Facebook Lives? Let's do a Facebook Live or the office or, or what we're doing each and every single day. I'll, I'll hide that up and just bring something of value, not even asking for it, but that value that you bring will secure your job, bring a new position. You might even create a new position and take things further. So become creative, use those skills, and like the Beastie Boys said, those skills will pay the bills. So have an amazing day. Uh, I'm back. I will see you guys uh, tomorrow. So tomorrow you're going to have, I, I forgot, you can see a new We Are Heroes episode. Make sure you check that out. Watch it again. Learn from it. Share it as well. And uh, any questions you have, just let us know. I'm just saying my mom's on there. Tommy Burke says, do you post these on YouTube? Yes, we do. So Tommy, you go to, uh, Tommy Burke says, go to YouTube. Go to Dr. Zaino, D-R-Z-A-I-N-O. And that'll be my the YouTube ch channel. On my YouTube channel, when you subscribe and hit notify, you're going to see the We Are Heroes. It's a playlist. Boom. All those in a row. And then you'll see the 15-minute fuels. This will be under 15-minute fuel. You'll see all 150 or 60 of them. And uh, we'll, they're, they're posted. They're there forever. Because Facebook, that thing gets down the feed. And uh, within a month, you'll lose it. Good to see you, Juan. Hey, Laquita. Hey, Tim. Hey, Ali. Jen. What's up, Rob? Oh, yeah. Rob said, did he take down Chuck Norris yet? Chuck Norris actually wasn't there. Bummer. <laughs> Bummer. So Chuck Norris wasn't there. He had some stuff going on. Not with him personally, but I'm sure family-wise. But <laughs> actually, uh, Chuck Norris's stunt double was there. Like, Chuck Norris needs a stunt double. And that dude looked just like, just like Chuck Norris. It was pretty... Uh... Oh, let me get into it even more. All right. So there was a kid there at the event from a Make-A-Wish Make a Wish Foundation. So I'm sitting there with Whitney, we're at the banquet, and the kid's there from a Make-A-Wish Foundation. And what do you think, the kid probably wants, you know, he probably went there because he wants to see Chuck Norris. So I'm sure they'll, they'll arrange it. So yeah, Chuck wasn't there. First in Jiu-Jitsu last year. Oh, yeah, so Whitney said he was first in Jiu-Jitsu. So you mean Justice, oh crap. So Justice got, uh, he's two-time world champion in Jiu-Jitsu. So Justice got first this year, first last year, and third, in, and he got third in sparring last year. So the first time he tried jujitsu, I believe he got third. So good. So he can't keep up with all that, uh, all his uh, hardware that he brings home. So what's next for Justice? We'll probably have Justice go over that. So we'll go to the drawing board. So now at this level, what do you? So what do you do? So let's say you feel if you feel you're maxed out. This all goes there. Let's say you're not you're maxed out, but you hit a level at work in your business. You're like okay, sustaining. Par is not going to make it anymore, right? So, at a certain level, you got to you got to decide what are you going to do. You know, so now Justice he'll probably talk about it. We'll bring mine. He's going to he's going to start doing gymnastics this year. And the reason being, he's like, you know, he has the choice. I could either say I'm done competing at ten, or I'm going to learn gymnastics, and then gymnastics will bring that other skill to bring into that form to now be able to keep that going on a, on a higher, even higher level. So. Uh, we'll bring them on. So remember, your skills pay the bills. So uh, whatever skills that you have, bring it. Those skills bring the value. You know, par is not going to make it anymore. What's the 1% you could do that brings that extra skill or value to the workplace or your job? And that will be the thing compounded over time that will take you places where no one else will be able to go. Have a blessed day. We'll see you soon.